One Easter, a priest and a taxi driver both died and went to heaven. St. Peter was at the pearly gates waiting for them. Come with me, said St. Peter to the taxi driver. The taxi driver did as he was told and followed St. Peter to a mansion. It had everything you could imagine from a bowling alley to an Olympic-sized pool. Oh my word, thank you, said the taxi driver. Next to St. Peter, next St. Peter led the priest to a rough old shack with a bunk bed and a little old TV in it. Wait, I think you mixed things up, said the priest. Shouldn't I be the one who gets the mansion? After all, I was a priest. I went to church every day and preached God's word. Yes, that's true, St. Peter rejoined. But during your Easter sermons, people slept. When the taxi driver drove, everyone prayed. So <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, well, to, um, I think I shared a little bit about a miracle that happened. I just love the synchronicity and the flow. You know, the universe can cool, make things so much cooler than we could ever imagine. And there's no way we could orchestrate what spirit has in mind for us. And I just always find that fascinating. That's why I just love to surrender because it's like when you surrender, you know, you're living in that anticipation and knowing that all is well and divine and it is. And a couple of weeks ago, Ellen and I, um, I was of course looking at what we need to do for the spring cleaning and it's like, okay, little pressure wash, a little touch up paint and repair and so uh, she's like, no, we can't spend that money on that. And I'm like, well, yeah, we're going to. So, I, I, uh, so on WTZQ, they have um, a commercial, which always I thought was so cute, two old men. And, and so there's these uh, two guys uh, that operate this business, 35 years of experience in pressure washing and painting. And um, I listened to the commercial and I called over up there. I said, I need their phone number call him the guy Ron comes to the um, house and of course it was not pre little pressure washing and touch up paint he's like Miss Charlotte I would be doing you a disservice if I was just going to touch up the paint uh, he goes you got you got mold there and that's and I don't want you to call me in six months to replace that he, he said I your whole house needs cleaning and painting and I'm like oh great <laughs> okay so anyway uh, but he's I just we really clicked and we're talking and he's like well Miss Charlotte you know he's, he's like not not a young man I'll just say that um, and calling me Miss Charlotte you know so he said what do you do for a living and I said well I'm a minister he goes oh really what church and I said the Namaste Center and then they always get this <laughs> first it's like I don't, I've never heard of that. That's the first one. And number two, what's, na 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 you know, they can't say it. And then after they say, ask you what it is, it's like, what's that mean? But after we got past that, uh, he's like, oh, well, you know, I do Sunday morning hymn time on the radio station. And um, I would love it if you would do a little um, resurrection piece for me on the radio show. He goes, do you celebrate religious holidays? And I said, oh yeah, you know, we, we celebrate all of them. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, so sure enough, uh, I didn't catch it today because it goes from seven to 11 on Sunday mornings. I was trying to hear it, but I, uh, he asked me to do a little piece for it. And I taped it last week and he called me up and he said, I really like that piece um, that you did. And uh, so I'm like, cool, you know, and I listened to a couple this morning and I'm like, wow, mine is a little different than what these guys <laughs> said. And that's OK. And uh, but, you know, that's what it's all about, bringing souls together. And, uh, you know, some may like it and some may not. But basically what I said, you know, I wanted to make it sort of uh, you know, I wanted to make it universal. Uh, and I said, good morning and happy Easter. We join today in celebrating the resurrection of our brother in Christ Jesus. This was a gift for all of us, inviting us to let go of our past sins or mistakes and surrender ourselves to the greater good of all by fully accepting God's will. Our sins, mistakes, and errors are a heavy burden to carry and weigh us down. Give yourself the gift of forgiveness today. 
Invite the Holy Spirit into your heart and give him the reins. Jesus gave this gift to us over 2,000 years ago. Let's honor him today by choosing resurrection in our minds and heart. The same power that resurrected Jesus is within each and every one of us, and that is good news. So the, the yeah, so we'll see how the, uh, because um, I know the uh, Namaste show doesn't, uh, I have an audience that fully agrees with everything I talk about every week, and so we'll see uh, if um, what that's like. And that's a good thing. And uh, so, by the way, Saturday mornings at 8:30. And uh, but anyway, it's um, it's all good. Well, I love it when. And by the way, everyone's welcome um, uh, to uh, send me anything. Like today, Art gave me a little piece that I'm going to share next week because I said, "My gosh, this is so perfect." for what I plan on talking about next week. And uh, Dottie had sent me something earlier this week and I was reading more about it. And there's different renditions of this story, but I think it's kind of a, a, I like it. And I'm gonna share it with you. And it's about Mary Magdalene. And it says there are myths which depict Mary Magdalene's ability to perform miracles. One tells of when she saw and spoke to the risen Christ, as it is believed she was the first to do. She hurried off to tell the other disciples. On her way, she met Pontius Pilate and told him of the wondrous news. Prove it, Pilate said. At that moment, a woman carrying a basket of eggs passed by and Mary Magdalene took one in her hand. As she held it up before Pilate, the egg turned brilliant red. To attest to the legendary event in the cathedral which bears her name in Jerusalem, there stands a beautiful statue of Mary Magdalene holding a colored egg. And isn't that beautiful? I'd never heard that before, but I read uh, there is some historical uh, truth to this. I don't know, there's a few different renditions of it, but uh, she was a miracle worker as well. You know, we, uh, there's certain belief systems that see her as the prostitute and uh, not, not a holy woman, but I believe that she walked the journey really closely with Jesus. And it's even uh, believed by many, I'll include myself in that, that she and Jesus were married and had a family. And um, so, uh, but that's, uh, you know, up for us, each of us to figure out on our own, but uh, I do believe that. And uh, it goes on to say the egg is, a, is very appropriate in this context since it is symbolic of new life and the capacity for giving birth. The colored egg is also associated with Astarta, the goddess of spring, whose name, our Easter, is de derived. Colored eggs were used in the spring celebrations honoring the goddess as they are today for Easter. And I always love, you know, all, the, all, when you look into the more universal perspective of our holy days, you know, Christmas and Easter, they originally were pagan holidays. And, uh, you know, the, and that's wonderful and good. Uh, but I, again, always trying to find that universal theme and thread that flows through all. And when you find these little nuggets, it's, it's great because it supports the greater message and makes us really more alike than we are different. So resurrection is basically uh, the restoration of our mind and body to their original undying state. And we do this by realizing that God is spirit and God created man with the same power that he, possess, he himself possesses. Uh, so it's that same power that I spoke of that raised Jesus from the dead that dwells within each and every one of us. And, you know, through this um, resurrection, we are creating a new heaven and a new earth, literally. And I, I, so there's so much significance in this Holy Week leading up to today, the resurrection, and of course we talked last week about Palm Sunday as Jesus is entering Jerusalem and he's on a donkey and he's feeling good and life is grand and a few days later he was betrayed and crucified and buried and, and you know the rest of the story. Today's the, the good day, uh, the great day, the whole, that was all a uh, setup for this wonderful message. And the cool thing is that I really know um, that we all have this power within us. And we, we have to, to tap into it though, we have to lift the veils that keep us asleep, keep us uh, heavy, burdened. Uh, 
And we do that through forgiveness. The Course in Miracles talks about, you know, the gift of lilies or the gift of thorns. And the, the thorns are holding on to the grievances and the judgments in the past and all of our hurts and condemnations towards ourselves and others. And, you know, as long as we're recycling those stories, you know, we'll never know what resurrection consciousness is. I think to tap into what this day is all about, we have to envision ourselves giving the gift of lilies, which is total forgiveness to anyone we think has, has uh, hurt us or condemned us or harmed us in any way. And that's a, that's a big, um, tall order. But again, if we've got, if we are the power of the universe, which I know and believe we are, each and every, and no one is, is exempt from that, then there's nothing we can't overcome. And so then you begin to realize that everything, even if it was painful at the time, is in perfect and divine order and served a greater good, not only in our own lives, but in the consciousness of all of us. And um, we're here today to celebrate that. In, in the Course in Miracles, Jesus teaches us that the resurrection is more important than the crucifixion. Yeah, for sure. He intended his execution to be a demonstration and a lesson for us so that we contend with so that we can contend with far less appalling perceived affronts, attacks, or injustices. He elected for our sake to show us the most horrible assault as judged by the ego, and uh, and it doesn't matter. You know, he's like, okay, what's the you know, I really believe that Jesus had this all scripted out and planned divinely. You know, I think that there's a soul contract when we come in and, and at a soul level, this was already in a divine plan. And of course, you know, can you think of a more horrible assault than, you know, being uh, nailed to a cross and beaten uh, and, and crucified? I mean, it, obviously it's terrible. He goes on to say, I was betrayed, abandoned, beaten, torn, and finally killed solely due to another's projection. I had not harmed anyone and I healed many. And I think that that is so true that um, often, you know, when we uh, take in this path of living in light and living in love sometimes isn't always the easiest path. Some people don't like to see happy people. They don't like to see powerful people. Um, and that's, uh, that's not really for us to deal with because the most powerful thing we can do is to stay in our own power and to be that presence of love. I find this really um, very, very interesting. Uh, there's a little bit of a twist in the Course of Miracles than maybe what we've understood in the past about Jesus' crucifixion. At the time of the crucifixion, Jesus couldn't feel any pain whatsoever. He could not suffer. That's just, why one, that's just one reason why the idea of him suffering and sacrificing himself for the sins of others is the biggest myth in human history. He couldn't suffer, and sacrifice was not a part of his perception. A body can sacrifice itself if you identify with it, but the lesson of the crucifixion was that Jesus could not be hurt because he was not a body. He didn't identify himself with the body, in his mind, he was experiencing his perfect oneness with God. What he really was could not be killed. It's possible for you to experience that. Imagine walking, appearing to walk on earth as Jesus did, feeling totally inv invulnerable and totally fearless. And that was the demonstration that he didn't suffer because he didn't identify. We talked a couple of weeks ago about the I am identity, false, true identity and false identity. And the true identity is our eternal nature. And that eternal nature, which is our, our spirit, can, is not touched by anything in this world. It's not affected by that at all. The body is, is in pain, it suffers, it perceives suffering and this and that. But the more we identify with our true identity, which is Christ consciousness, then there is no suffering in that. I really know that to be the truth and, and feel it in, in the heart of my heart. So he became the model for the rebirth of the realization in our minds, which is already there. It's there, we just have to make clear away all the stuff that blocks it. The resurrection is our reawakening to that which was placed in our minds by God. 
Jesus accepted it and asked that we join him in this acceptance so to teach the truth. The message of the crucifixion is perfectly clear. Teach only love, for that is what you are. If you interpret the crucifixion in any way other than this, you're choosing to stay asleep. You're choosing to stay in your littleness. So teach only love, um, for that is what you are. Now, uh, to put it simply, the resurrection uh, of Jesus was not just for him. It was for all of us. He says, uh, you know, basically the, the demonstration, the symbology of the cross and the perceived suffering was what we do to ourself, you know. And he says he took that last useless journey uh, for us. We don't have to do that anymore. It's like, do you want to keep your grievances and hold your attack thoughts and your judgments and condemnations, or do you want to resurrect? And I don't think we can have both. Uh, I know we can't have both because good God and... Um, and ego cannot exist in the same room at the same time. We're, each moment we're choosing one over the other. So what we give our dominant thought to is what we create. Um, where did I, I just lost something I was looking for. Uh, well, <laughs> that's right though. Okay, I, I can't find it. I really, that is too weird. Oh, well, it was a good message, and it was, um, <laughs> uh, okay, so I can't find it. What can I say? Uh, but it was just another way to say that uh, teach only love for that is what you are, but it was from the book of John, and I found it very appropriate for today. So teach, oh, that's the message. So through the years, we have spoken on the resurrection of Christ. We have focused on the historical event, primarily through the years, We've looked at the physical characteristics of, um, of the resurrection. Of course, the tomb, the soldiers, the women, the disciple, the grave clothes, the angel, and all of that. We focused on, um, on the physical aspects, but the metaphysical, the beyond the physical, is, is what this really is asking us to do. Not to just look and tell the story over and over and over, but really bringing that into our hearts and living from that. Because salvation is, is not about adding something new to what we were. Salvation is transforming us into being a new being. And the way we do that is um, through, again, the gift of lilies rather than the gift of thorns. And releasing our old self and awakening to the new self, which is our ascended self, our resurrected self. And I love this. It says, look this Easter, look with a different vision on your holy relationships. The Holy Spirit's vision is not an idle gift to be played with for a while and then tossed aside. Listen carefully. Don't think the Holy Spirit's vision is an illusion, a careless thought to play with, or a toy to pick up from time to time. If you do this, that's what it will be to you. And, you know, it's not about just living when this is convenient. It's because, you know, it's real easy to love people that are nice to us and act the way we want them to. I mean, that's obvious. And it's real easy to love everyone in here, even though we, we you know, we are a big family and we have our little squabbles now and then. But uh, other than that, you know, it's pretty easy to love everyone here because we're in good behavior and we come in here. But what we're really uh, asked to do is what do we do when we leave here? Are we willing to really honor and love those that we uh, think have harmed us in the past or condemned us? Are we willing really to forgive our past? And through this, today I really see this as allowing ourselves to open up to new vision and that's looking past all the illusions or all the stories that we've made up about ourselves and each other. In other words, back to that false identity. You know, uh, we are not our bodies, we're not our jobs, we're not any of that. We're so much greater than that. Live our life from the inside out rather than the, um, live our lives from the inside out rather than the outside in. For this is the way to heaven and the peace of Easter. Join your mind in Christ and the glad awareness that you have risen from your personal self to reawaken to the present divinity. Now you are free and limitless in your oneness with all that is within you. And now is your innocence untouched by guilt and perfectly protected from fear and the belief that separation from God is real. 
Your extension of love to your relationship saves you from pain and fear, and your Christ mind is the strength that will guide you and move you beyond all your fear. Walk in your holy relationship rejoicing because you've resurrected your Christ mind and it has come into your awareness to save you from your illusions and to lead you home. So in closing, I, I just see this as, I love Easter. Uh, I, it always felt good, even growing up, I grew up in a big church and the, you know, they had the big organs and how many of you all grew up in a church with a big, you know, where they played those? And then you'd have the choir belting out the music and, and there's something, even if you look at the, the music that, um, all of the um, wonderful composers wrote, Handel in particular, the, the scale that he used, the solfagio scale in the music was transformative. It was really uh, transformational music. You had that feeling and that transformational experience. Uh, of course, the Easter Bunny was always a fun thing on Easter Sunday. That was a great thing. Um, there was a lot of good memories. I had a sister born on Easter, which was pretty amazing, 50 years ago. And uh, April 18th, uh, th not the same day as today. So there's a lot of good memories, but I never really took it into, into my heart and understand it like I do today. And I know that for me to resurrect my consciousness, for me to really allow that power to, to merge, I have to be willing to fully surrender to what is place my future in God's hands. And you know what? I'm not the least bit afraid of that because it's way better than anything any of us could ever make up. So remember, peace and love prevail on earth. And so it is, and happy Easter, namaste.